them every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Central Time. And now a brief word from our sponsors. Link Technologies, providing ISP consulting support and hardware for wireless ISPs. TowerCoverage.com, providing online RF coverage maps. And now your host for ISP Radio, Steve Grabiel and Dennis Burgess. Welcome to another edition of ISP Radio. I'm your host, Steve Grabiel, broadcasting from Moriarty, New Mexico, and Dennis Burgess is producing the show and co-hosting it from St. Louis. Well, I hope everyone had a great 4th of July weekend. I was out screwing around four-wheeling in the mountains of uh, southern Colorado. Kind of got into some hairy predicaments, but had a great time. And, and one place we camped at at night, it got down to 37 degrees, if you can believe that. It was nice getting out of the heat. But had a great time, and we're back in, back in business uh, providing Internet. Dennis, how's things going in your neck of the woods? Well, I'll tell you what. We've been uh, really busy lately. We've had a lot of uh, work and a lot of uh, projects that we've been working on. It's always a good thing. Um, we got a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, let's see here. We have uh, Wispa Palooza, Trina Coffee, the Director of Operations. She's going to come on uh, the radio show on July 26th. So next week we're not going to have a show. But July 26th we will have Trina on, and she'll talk about uh, the Wispa Palooza out in Vegas. Uh, definitely one of the biggest events that is known in the current uh, you know arena as far as uh, – Wisps are concerned. Uh, we also have a tire coverage version 3 launch, uh, August 2nd. That will be our next show following Trina's. And then we have Unitel with Ryan. Uh, looks like it's Keeley. I'm, I may be mispronouncing that. And that's on August 9th. Uh, otherwise, we've been really busy, which is always a really good thing. Uh, lots of uh, hosted customers that we take care of that uh, need assistance and lots of Wisps that need assistance and uh, work on it. So... All, all in all, pretty good. Is it, have the has the announcement by the board to run for uh, offices on the board of directors for WISP been announced? Um, no, that gets announced Friday. Uh, the nominations committee has approved. Uh, actually, tomorrow we get all the nominations approved. But uh, of all the people that have uh, requested to be nominated or have been nominated. Uh, they have uh, all been approved. We just have to get their final, hey, yes, I'm, I'm doing good, and yes, I do wish to uh, run for the board of directors. So uh, that actually happens tomorrow. And then on Friday, uh, Friday morning, there will be a email that will go out uh, from the uh, board of directors that basically says here's the nominations, here's who's running, here's all of their bio information. Uh, everything from uh, some people supplied their resume, some people did not, et cetera, so forth. So uh, all that information should be available on Friday. Uh, and that's officially the start time of the campaigning period. Once the uh, campaigning period is done, then we'll have a week to vote uh, electronically. Everybody will have an email to their designated voting email uh, sent out. Um, the week prior to the voting for the Board of Directors, we also have a uh, bylaws change vote. So uh, we do need, uh, and, and I'll be honest with you, there, there's plenty of stuff in there, and we've already released all that information as far as I, as far as I know we have. Um, but 99% of it is just grammar corrections capitalization, you know, things like that. Um, there are definitely some changes in there, nothing too major or broad, but uh, you definitely need to take a look at that. And I'm sure Trina, uh, whenever we get her on the, the call on July 26th, can go over those bylaw changes as well. Uh, we may even see if we can get someone in uh, that, that knows those bylaws changes a little bit better as well. <coughs> well, good. <coughs> Busy, busy is good and uh, always moving forward. Oh, yeah. So on, to oh, yeah. on today's show, we uh, have a special guest, Justin Joyner, with Lego Wave, and he's a sales assistant there, and he so graciously uh, decided to do a show for us. Uh, Justin, are you there? Yes, I am, Stephen. Well, thank you for being on our show. Uh, we appreciate it. So tell us a little bit about yourself and the company you work for, Lego Wave. All right. Well, my name is uh, Justin Joyner. I'm from uh, Kennesaw, Georgia. Uh, previously, I've been in the military. I was a United States Navy service member for four years out in San Diego. Uh, I was attached to an LHD amphibious assault vehicle cra or assault craft. 
worked with Marines, Navy, and Air Force. Um, got out of the Navy, worked in Yellowstone for a few years. I was a charter boat fishing captain out there and a snowmobile tour guide. Mm-hmm. Uh, came back to the uh, to Georgia to get into a career mode and got a job at Legal Wave to sell wireless solutions. Fun. That's a little bit of background on me. What do you what do Thank you for your service to the country. Absolutely. What do you, what do you do as a <laughs> snowmobile tour guide? Um, well, you uh, you lead um, up to twelve people in a crew, um, and we and I'm in charge, and we've got um, up to twelve snowmobiles behind me, and basically I'm in charge of their safety and taking them on <laughs> snowmobile tours to Yellowstone um, in the winter time. Uh, most of the parks actually closed off, so the only way that you can actually access certain parts of the park is with all-terrain vehicles or snowmobiles. So I offer those tours and uh, take people on those guided uh, wilderness tours and everything like that. Cool. That that sounds cool. Real, real, Absolutely. real, real fun. Anyway, it sounds fun. <laughs> it, it was fun. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a fun part stuff. of my life. Great stuff. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. You know, Steve, I wanted to kind of mention that there was actually a couple other uh, things that I, I forgot to mention. Um, one of those is Microtech uh, has released two new products uh, to distribution, and and I don't mean to 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 get away from uh, Justin here, but uh, two new products to distribution, and one of those is the CRS three seventeen one G sixteen S plus RM. Uh, this is a sixteen port ten gig switch. It can run router OS or switch OS. However. It is a switch. It is not going to route 10 gig at all. Uh, we actually had a customer a while back that had a CRS, and they're like, oh, we want to do inter-VLAN routing. I'm like, not with a CRS. You can, you can switch it, but not, not uh, get that, that type of performance out of it. The big thing, the really big thing on this one is the list price. The list price is 400 bucks. So if you need 10 gig switches, 400 bucks, you get 16 ports. Uh, really, really inexpensive. The other product that they actually released is the, uh, I'm going to find it here, is the WAP LTE Kit US. Um, what this is, is this is a dual, uh, a dual chain wireless uh, integrated modem, integrated LTE modem for the US and an outdoor enclosure, um, and it has a built in 2.4 gigahertz AP in it. But what's really cool is it has an LTE modem in it. And basically, those products are going to be able to sell for the retail is 119 So now you're going to be able to, for 119 bucks, you go up to Verizon, you go up to uh, Sprint, you go to uh, AT&T, and you buy SIM cards for them, put them on your plan, and you plug, plug the SIM card in, and now you have a mobile hotspot. And the devices are... are uh, 24, and they'll run off 12 volt PoE. Uh, 12 volt PoE. Uh, they actually run from 9 to 48, I believe. So because of that, I mean, I, I'm planning on putting one in my car as soon as I get it. <laughs> so right, right. Re- really cool stuff at 119 bucks. I mean, uh, we we've, we've done some mobile solutions before with USB modems and stuff like that. And heck, the modems are 300 bucks. So right. now we have a modem uh, along with a wireless for 119 bucks. I mean, cheap, cheap. Yeah. So anyway, well, yeah, <laughs> those are, those are some of the products. I guess what you're saying is they're ready to roll those out among the other products we heard about at the moment. Correct. Yeah, they've actually released them to distribution. In other words, we've already placed them on order, and as soon as we can get them in, we're going to get them in. Right. And and literally well, that that came out today. So nobody right. has them yet, but we we have placed our order, and hopefully we'll get them in very quickly. Right. Well, sorry, Justin, for digressing. We forgot about <laughs> yeah, sorry. The, the exciting news about the Microtech product. So tell us a little bit about LegalWave, where it, where it came from and where it's at. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started on this presentation. Like I said, my name is uh, Justin Joyner, and I'm a sales assistant here at LegalWave. Uh, right now we're based in uh, Canton, Georgia. Um, we were founded uh, in 2007. Um, we have offices in Hong Kong, Lithuania, and Canton, Georgia, where I'm at. So we're pretty much global. Um, We're all over the place. Um, We offer high-performance wireless products. Um, Our emphasis is on innovation, versatility, and being affordable. Um, Our products are in over 150 countries. Um, We specialize in the point-to-multipoint, point-to-point, and wireless indoor-outdoor access points. 
A uh, little slogan for you from Legal Wave is our passion, customer satisfaction, and appreciation will make us industry leaders. Um, so that's a little intro to our company. Mm -hmm. um, we offer four types of solutions. One of them is enterprise solutions. Um, powerful operating system. It's HTML5 user interface allows more versatile access of wireless equipment. Uh, reliable security mechanisms. Um, you can see the uh, AES-128 encryption, the 197 standard, and that protects sensitive data, which should obviously be suitable for banking and government applications. Um, we offer high capacity links, the high output power plus high gain antennas. Usually we get around 100 megabits per second um, with up to 50 kilometers or 30 plus miles in distance. Um, those are these enterprise solutions are mostly like it says at the bottom Wi-Fi hotspot remote office private networks Video surveillance data and voice and video. So the private government sector on the enterprise side I got a um, question. What's the HTM? I got a question Yeah, yes, I got a question for you uh, If you go to the back screen there the HTML5 yes. What does that mean? That's our GUI, our management and the GUI for the radios. That's the uh, the GUI management for the radios. Okay. Yeah. So they they don't have uh, like Java or Flash as their their web interface. They actually use HTML5, uh, which is built into every web browser out there. So you don't have to install Flash. You don't have to install Java. You don't have to install anything. You can just use a web browser and everything works. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. We try to make things simple on the use. <coughs> um, another one is operator solutions. Um, variety of devices, point to point, point to multi point for various distances with different capacities and price points. Um, choice of unique devices for different scenarios. So we pretty much like to say we have an application um, or a product for any type of application. Um, proprietary protocols, um, WJET and IPOL maximize the performance of our PTP of PTMP devices. Um, the iPol eliminates transmission congestion and close cluster interference created in PTMP wireless installs. And the WJET is our protocol for point-to-point -point applications. Um, these are used for um, RF intense environments. They offer higher bandwidth, higher packs per second rate, lower stable latency with no distance limitation. Um, super reliable, solid performance ensures service provider success. So a lot of this is for your ISPs, um, wireless broadband, and like rural indoor outdoor type applications. Um, industrial, um, professional hardware design. Um, our brand is designed according to specific standards for industrial applications. We like to boast our IP67 carrier grade rating in our enclosures. Um, also, with our products, um, we like to offer our integrated surge protection systems, which are good with those um, areas where it's got some weather issues. You know, the radios are suspect to uh, getting hit with lightning or bad weather, and that can disable the radio. Uh, we offer the integrated uh, surge protection to where instead of replacing the whole radio, you would actually have to replace one piece of that radio, usually a circuit board, and it's very easy to replace. Um, you can get that back up and running. And these, like I said, it says at the bottom, video surveillance, uh, oil filled, mining, offshore, oil, gas, energy, all those types of applications. Um, we also have security solutions, so our, um, our products can be tapped in with you know, security camera installations, stuff like that. Um, WJet and IPOL are obviously utilized for this because of the interference, RF and, uh, interference in these environments. And um, it offers automatic channel selection and automatic transmit power. So it avoids noisy channels and optimi optimizes the RF output power. Um, these type of solutions would be perfect for video surveillance, traffic light monitor, highway safety, traffic management, and disaster recovery. So a quick question. Yes. <clears throat> You're, uh, say you got a point to point in a noisy environment. If I do the auto channel selection, it'll automatically go to the cleanest channel and the cleanest uh, uh, channel width to optimize the, the service? Yes. Because some of the other solutions that I've seen, they'll uh, suggest a cleaner channel that you have to manually do. That makes sense? 
Well, we do have manual. Built-in spectrum analyzer. On our, products. A, our products have a built-in spectrum analyzer. Right. Okay, so it allows you to scan the spectrum for the finished channel. And yeah, that basically that'll allow you to scan um, for the best uh, channel within that spectrum. Right, but will the Lego Wave gear automatically, if you put it in that auto channel selection, will it automatically? without having user interference, will it automatically pick the best, most optimal channel in the in the specific, or any specific uh, channel width? In most cases, yes. Okay. That's powerful. All right. Next slide. Our infinity access points, um, they are our <clears throat> wireless indoor and outdoor hotspots. Um, professional product range, um, we like to boast our plug and play functionality, ease of use, um, ideal for indoor and outdoor installations. Um, controller less scenario, that would be for smaller networks. And we also offer a cloud-based controller with extended functionality for these. It's a little uh, slide here to show some of our products. We have six different products for our Infinity hotspots. Um, three of them do not offer the dual band. Those are the, uh, the one ends. Um, they just offer the 2.4 gigahertz. Um, when you get to the two ACs and the three ACs, they offer the dual band. Um, all of them except for the NFT two AC outdoor are all indoor. So you only have one outdoor application. Um, and they're very, very flexible on their mountings. They're very easy to mount up. Um, all of them except for the outdoor one has internal antennas. Um, that one has in connectors for external antennas, so you can have better range outdoors, and you just have to select the right antennas for that. So here's a little uh, model right here for all of our products. Um, there are three options for the controller that we offer um, to utilize for our Infinity hotspots. Uh, there's a standalone setting, which is suitable for small networks uh, that do not require centralized management and maintenance. You have the integrated, um, which each Infinity access point supports controllerless architecture, which is ideal for small to medium-sized deployments. You can have up to 50 access points on that. Um, unique architecture allows secure, scalable, cost-effective, and simple deployments. Um, external supports unlimited amount of devices and is ideal for large networks that can be remotely located across the world. Um, so, we offer, yes. Integrated, would that be like, so you say like small deployments, would that be, because I'm, ex I'm guessing external means that it's a cloud, it's a cloud, cloud controller for, to handle all these things. Would integrated be like your infinity controller loaded on a local server or something like that, that would manage that for an ISP? It would be on the radio. What's that? On the it's built into the radio. Okay. Um, that's about it. Okay. Um, and that's a free download. We have. I have the link down here at the bottom. You can check that out. Um, okay. It's our Infinity controller. <coughs> so the controller is a downloadable item that you do not have to pay for. Correct. Okay. So one of the differences with Lego Wave uh, or, or or Lego Wave, whatever however you pronounce it, uh, Lego Wave, Lego Wave, is that you can download the controller. It's very much like uh, Unify software, where you can download the Unify controller. You can make it a cloud-based, or you can make it a local-based uh, controller. Correct. Correct. Okay. Gotcha. So, but they also offer an integrated, so where the Infinity controller is actually integrated into one of the access points, and they allow up to 50 access points to be controlled by that one access point. Would that be correct? Correct. Okay. And what about an AB Infinity controller on the integrated solution? So the, the question would be, uh, if you have one Infinity controller that is integrated into your access points, and you have, let's say, 50 or let's say 40 access points, uh, and you have one extra one that's your uh, your controller, 
what happens if that one goes down? Do you have a B controller that it can actually take over? You can set it up like that. We recommend to have two. Okay. To set up for redundancy. Okay. So you can have multiple integrated controllers in a 50 access point network. Yeah, with our new easy mesh system, you can. Gotcha. All righty. Yeah. Good stuff. Go ahead. All right, we can go to the next slide. We're going to go into our Lego DLB line. Um, this is our last mile point to multi point, point to point applications. Um, high capacity, 170 megabits per second throughput. And that's actual throughput. It's not just a market scheme, it's actual data. Um, 90,000 packets per second rate. It's ideal for your internet service providers. We have a large selection of devices. And it's point to point and unlicensed 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands. Um, the DLB 515, um, 80,000 packets per second rate. Like I said, 170 megabits per second. Um, it's got a high output 29 dBm radio with an integrated uh, directional 15 dBi antenna. Um, the point to point mode, um, it's in kilometers, but I've also got it in miles. It's 4.35 miles for the United States side. And then the point to multi point, um, the range is three miles. We got our Lego DLB 520N, same thing, 170 megabits uh, per second capacity. Um, it's IP66 certified plastic, um, flexible mounting, wall and pole mounting option. Uh, it's got a, the DLB line's also got a decreased form factor, so it's a little bit lighter. Um, so we also like to boast the uh, lower shipping costs. So if you're trying to save some money on shipping and all that, it's a good option to save some money on that because it weighs a little bit more or a little bit less. Um, point to point on this one is uh, almost 10 miles, 9.3. And uh, the point to multi point is at about 6.2 miles. And what's the gain on that? 20? 20? 20, 20, 20 DBI. I'm assuming yes. 20. Sorry, <laughs> gotcha. Yep. All right, we got our Lego DLB AC line, um, 500 plus megabits per second throughput. It's a result of the 802.11 AC in the eye pole, um, obviously dealing with the interference. Um, high output power and sensitivity parameters increase the range and capacity. Um, like I said, the eye pole point to multi point eliminates transmission congestion in the wireless installations. Um, integrated surge protection. Backwards compatible with previous generation products using the iPole. I believe that's utilized with a firmware update. Yes. Um, and that helps expand slash upgrade existing networks utilizing the latest technologies over time. Um, high performance allows more bandwidth together with additional services such as VOIP and IPTV. I have a question on your iPole. You claim that it uh, eliminates transmission congestion in point to point, point to multi point installations. Um, how is that? The iPole is obviously your secret sauce. Do you guys are you guys using uh, GPS sync or anything like that to where all the radios are talking to your APs at the same time? No GPS uh, sync on our products. No GPS sync. No. It's not really necessary for this type of application. It uh, no GPS sync means a lower cost product. But yet, still high performance. Right, and the i the iPole being the the special sauce. Uh, what That's do they right. call that, Dennis? T TDMA or CDMA? TDMA. 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 So that your your special TDMA uh, protocol. Gotcha. All right. Thank you for your questions, guys. Yeah. Um. We got DLB 515 AC. Um, you can put it into a hotspot scenario. Uh, it can be converted into access points for outdoor hotspot networks. Um, it's got a 24 volt gigabyte Ethernet port with passive PoE. Um, allows full capacity of radio and point to point and point to multi point networks. It's got a 20 dBi directional panel antenna, zero loss design and lightweight design. Um, and it boasts a 4.35 point to point mode in the mileage and 3.11 miles in the point to multi point mode. Uh, 520 AC, I mean, they're about the same uh, 500 megabits per second throughput. Um, like I said, the iPole eliminates the transmission congestion, it's lightweight design. 
but this one's got a little bit more mileage on it. Um, the point to point is going to be 9.3 miles and the point to multi point is 6.21. So it's about double. What kind of uh, throughput speeds have you seen at longer distances? Um, you guys might even know this one. Yes. It depends on how many devices are loaded onto it. And the point to point, um, we have a, a free tool on our website that you can use that will show the actual performance of the devices. So um, the actual throughput depends on environmental factors, um, of course. distance, things like that. But you can get the exact performance with our free tool at legalwave.com under support tab. Okay, so, the, so the, that calculator is under support tab. Uh, what, 150 to 200 plus? Or longer distances. Yeah. 150 to 200 longer distances. Okay. Okay. No, it was a different one. But it's still operating the same protocol. What was that again? Just the... Oh, it was a case study. We have uh, how many kilometers? It was 200. Yeah, 200 kilometer link in Thailand. Yeah, we had a 200 kilometer link in Thailand. What was it? What was the throughput on that? The throughput uh, for that is not very high because it's 200 kilometers. Right. Um, but this goes to show that the devices can connect over. A, yeah, we don't. I don't have the exact uh, throughput on that, but we had a case study in Thailand at about 200 kilometers. Um, I mean, obviously that's a that's a long range, and we were still able to get connected at the long range. Um, I don't know exactly, wow. through, but I can get back to you on that. You know, we do okay. have a lot of case studies on our website, legalwave.com. Um, there's a tab, I believe it's called blog, and you can read all of our case studies. It shows the scenario, including uh, the distances. It has even screenshots of the devices, and it shows the throughput. So a lot of really useful information on our website about different scenarios with a different product. Cool. Cool. Absolutely. I think our longest is close to 100 miles. Wow. With uh, 5 gigahertz. Wasn't that the rapid fire? It was uh, rapid fire with a, uh, I think it was like a 37 DVI dish. Nope. It was over the desert, though. I actually have that. Yeah, case yeah. <laughs> All right. Next slide. Our Lego PTP line. Um, it's an exciting line that we offer. Um, 700 megabits per second capacity. Like I said, carry grade design, um, point to point scenario oriented protocol. We like to always say we are easy setup, plug and play, and uh, easy management. Low maintenance on this as well. And what I like to always say about the, the PTP line was that it has a 2.4 gigahertz radio in there. And a key feature to that is, let's say you have to do some maintenance or uh, fix one of the links and you don't want to in a firmware update and you don't want to climb up that ladder. If you have a Wi-Fi access or if you're able to, you know, utilize your phone in a rural area, you don't have to climb up there to actually do the repair on it. You can do it from the ground if you've got a connection. Um, and that helps out, I feel like, with safety and you know, just getting things done a lot quicker than having to go up to a ladder and take care of all that. Absolutely. Um, what, what kind of connector on the top is that? Is that a... That's end connectors, isn't yes. it? End connectors. End, we have okay. two models. One has end connectorized, and then we also have a model with a 23 dBi integrated panel antenna. Yep. Okay. That's just kind of a general picture right there I got. Um, but like I said, the, the we were talking about the links. Longest link was... a. Uh, on this was 195 kilometers. Uh, I didn't get the mileage on that, but it's over 100. Um, with a 34 dBi antenna, it had 70 megabits per second at 20 hertz. So wow. it's pretty interesting. Long distance, too. Uh, the Lego PTP Rapid Fire, I, it's one of our most exciting lines or products that we have. Um, offers a 45 degree antenna tilt option, which obviously increases install flexibility, easier to link up. Um, 1.2 gigahertz CPU at 200,000 packets per second. Um, it's got five channels, uh, 5, 10, 20, and 40 and 80 megahertz. Like I was saying, the 2.4 gigahertz radio allows Wi-Fi access, um, carrier grade surge protection, second Ethernet port with PoE out. Um, it's a cool option as well. Um, you can potentially add a camera through a uh, Ethernet line directly into that and get. Um, Good connection with that. 
Are those uh, gig are those gig ports on the rapid fire or ten one hundred? They're gigaport. Gigabit. They're gigabit, yeah. Um, we won the award for best spectral efficiency um, at the Wispal Wispalooza in 2015 at 80 plus megahertz channel bandwidth. Um, and that was with the rapid fire. And uh, the other model, this one, like the one I was telling you about, the rapid fire, it's got the in connectors. Um, the Lego PTP rapid fire 5 23 has the integrated 23 dBi directional panel antenna. Um, Lego PTP 5N Pro and the 523 Pro. It's a 220 megabits per second capacity. Obviously, a little bit downscaled from the other uh, rapid fire. It's a 60,000 packets per second. Um, offers only two channels of the 20 and the 40 megahertz. Um, N connectors on the 5N. Obviously, 5N stands for the N, and then the 523 has the DBI, 23 DBI integrated antenna. Um, they have external OLED for antenna alignment. The OLED actually uh, makes it a lot easier for technicians to go through the settings on the um, on the radio itself. It's very simple, very um, very plain type text, and it's very easy to use. Um, IP67 rated, integrated surge protection, like I said, and we offer with our products a free wireless network management system. All right, um, our new Lego PTMP line. We, when did we just, we released this, what, probably about a month ago, yeah. I believe? In yes. We've had it out for about a month. Um, incredible performance, up to 600 megabits per second. Um, centralized network management, utilized for resource demanding applications. We have two types, the Lego subscriber units, which is the Lego SU, and the Lego base stations, Lego base. Um, here's just some highlights from it. We got the SU520. Um, and it's got the integrated 20 dBi antenna, um, 720 megahertz CPU, 120,000 packets per second, um, up to 30 dBm output power. Um, distance recommendations on that, max distance, I didn't get the, uh, the mileage, but it's 13 kilometers at 600 megabits per second. Um, and that is a typo at the bottom, so we will not talk about that one. <laughs> um, the 5N, obviously, if you want to extend the range on that, you just add um, different antennas on it because it's got the N-type connectors, and that's the distance is antenna dependent on that. But it also boasts the 600 megabits per second as well on the throughput. Um, 523, um, that's got the 23 DVI panel antenna on it. It's already integrated on there. Um, the distance recommendations for that um, is 15 kilometers. I believe it's probably about 11 miles, 9 to 11 miles, something like that. For, yes. Um, and it's 600 megabits per second. Wow. Um, our Lego Base 5N, um, obviously we've caught on that N stands for the N connectors, so antenna dependent on that. Um, 120,000 packets per second offers powerful 1.2 gigahertz CPU. Um, and 600 megabits per second on that one as well. Um, 590, it's got kind of the same thing as the, uh, the rapid fire. It's got a 2.4 gigahertz radio for the management side of that. Um, integrated 17 dBi, 90 degree sector antenna. Um, max coverage, 9.3 miles at 600 megabits per second. Um, our WNMS, that's our... Um, Free enterprise grade wireless network management system. Uh, multiple networks may be maintained and monitored using one server. We have a rich feature set with that. Um, with that, you can diagnose network problems effectively, visualize networks on a map, form scheduled firmware upgrades automatically, track the states of devices, failure alerts, and its collection of statistics for your links. Let's go back to the uh, point to multi point. Okay. You mentioned about the single site configuration and the ability for the uh, base station to manage all of the subscriber units. So basically, you can just configure uh, the base station and then it will manage all of the subscriber units automatically. So it makes it a very easy deployment and management. And the Rapid Fire is the same way, it has a single side uh, connection wizard. So you want to touch base on those features a little bit? Did you guys hear that by chance? A little bit. Um, we're talking about the single side. Um, 
it's called the single side configuration. And that's a, a principle we've incorporated into both the rapid fire and our new Lugo point to multi point devices. So basically, you go to uh, the master side and you can configure the remote side uh, with just uh, uh, the wizard. So basically, it'll automatically detect any remote devices and configure them and then connect them. Uh, the point to multi point has the same type of a setup where you just configure the base station and it will link up and connect to all of the subscriber units. Uh, this is great for management, updating firmware, uh, making changes in configuration, and just basic ease of use. Uh, so it makes uh, the installer's time easier. So, for example, let me just throw it out there because I'm an ISP. I am an installer. I go out in the field. All I would have to do is basically plug uh, mount everything, plug in the PoE, point it towards the tower, and then the access side, the master side, would uh, connect them up and and do all the magic to get them configured? That is correct. Now, there are some things that we have some security built in, so you don't want to have, like, anybody just connecting. Like, on a West Bible, say this is your investment, so you don't want just anybody connecting a CPE and getting free Internet. So we do have some security features built in, so you would have to... Uh, enable the uh, the subscriber unit by via MAC address um, in advance, or you could basically coordinate with your team at the uh, tower and tell them, okay, MAC address such and such coming live, and then they could activate it. So there uh, are security, okay. but they don't really have to go in and configure anything. It's just it's pretty much a plug and play type of a system. Mm -hmm. Ease of use for the installer. Yeah. Now you know our recommendation is basically before you would go to. Uh, your customer's premises, you would just automatically add the MAC address to the base station. That way, when your installer goes out and connects it, he just literally plugs it in, points it at the tower, like you said, and they're up and running. Yeah. Thanks for uh, cl clearing that up. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Um. I also have a uh, link calc tool, which is our link planning tool, and I've put the, uh, the website there as well. It's at legalwave.com slash product slash software, and you'll see the link down there at the bottom when you go to there. Um, but it calculates link performance expectations. You know, when we do this, you get geographical information, understanding if the links are going to work. Um, it shows distance, antenna height gain, and transmit power all in our, our software. Um, it aids in product selection for products or projects. Um, custom calculations using other vendors' equipment specs. Um, free of charge, just need to register the software. Um, it offers a database of the links. Um, you can download your link calculations as PDFs and see them, uh, um, take them, I guess, on a flash drive or something to look at later. Um, and you can publish your hy hyperlink online to be shared so others can see it. A little bit easier to check it out, too, with your links established. Additional information, um, something that we like to tell a lot of our customers about our company, you know, there's a lot of companies out there, but um, we offer a double warranty of two years on our products. I know some big companies out there usually only offer about a year. Um, we also offer free tech support with our products. You can get us via phone, email, or Skype, um, but we're there to help out in any way, shape, or form to get our products up and running or answer any questions that you all may have. One, uh, one one question on your free technical support. Say I purchased some of, some of your equipment and I want it to optimize or whatever for the conditions I'm in, and I'm not truly used to the uh, con configuration. Will you guys help help the client out by um, going into their radio and help them optimize the link for the con the the um, changing conditions that may go on. Yeah, we, we absolutely do that. Our, our tech support, um, Leslie, um, she actually does that all the time. Um, she gets into people's radios and we'll do a firmware update for them or, you know, check the status of the radios, why the link's not working, go through the logs and try to configure it for them and help them out on their end because, you know, they purchased our products and we want to back them on that with offering that support. Right. So, um, like I said, we're a carrier-grade wireless solutions company. Um, on our website, we offer webinars and videos. Um, we have certified trainers to help out in any way, shape, or form with any questions that you may have. 
Um, we have a wiki page with all our product information, data sheets, and case studies. Um, our main page is at www.legalwave.com. Um, I've got my phone number here with my direct extension if you want to get in contact with me after the show. Um, I put my email on there as well and our support email um, for our company. Um, uh, qu question I got about your products across all platforms is the user um, interface. Uh, are they all the same, number one? And number two, do you have a something we could see that uh, would indicate the user interface, uh, what it looks like? Maybe poke through it? Mm. We'll look for that real quick. You're talking about for the controller or? No, just uh, your your radio gear. Well, they, they are all pretty much the same. They have the same texture, the same feel, and all of the settings are pretty much in the same general area. Um, yeah. With this particular station that uh, Justin is at, we, we don't have a way to connect a radio. We have those in our lab, so, and um, um, I don't know if we have any screenshots of the GUI. Do you? Do we have any in a... We can send you some. Oh, we, yeah, we can send you some screenshots. Do you guys have that on your website? Yes, it's also there. Yeah, I think it's also in our product overview, which can be downloaded from our website. Uh -huh. Yeah, it'd just be nice to be able to see what uh, the user interface looks like. But you say it's, of course, there's different bells and whistles, but the interface looks the same across all product lines. Correct. Yeah, that's pretty much the case. Now, obviously, there's going to be different... Um, uh, as you said, bells and whistles for like difference between the point to point and then the DLB, DLB AC, and then the point to multi point because of their different nature. But right. like we've really tr worked hard to make sure that the feel and texture and location of all the settings are the same throughout Good. our products. That way it's very easy to, um, to understand the product and to uh, acclimate from one series to the next. Gotcha. Got so anything else, Dennis? Were there any questions on the, the chat? Nope, nope. We are good. I think uh, we need to probably uh, get off here and uh, we can continue on. Did you guys have anything else to add? We appreciate you guys being on the show. Um, and we've left you with uh, how to get in contact with Justin and Lego Wave. Sounds like they've got a interesting product, some high-capacity stuff. Yes, we do. Um, I was going to show you, I guess, um, an example of the GUI real quick if y'all wanted to look at it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, pull this we appreciate up. it. Absolutely. It's actually on our website. So this is just uh, the page for our DLB 5-920 AC, 5 gigahertz, 20 dBi, 11 AC. And if you scroll down, Justin. Can y'all see it at all? Uh, we lost yeah. your screen share. Yeah. 